So nice to meet you, Alex. I'm so excited to talk to you about this movie, which has been formative for a lot of generations, myself included, as you can probably tell by the outfit. Yeah, I'm actually soaking in all the awesome <laughs> art you have behind you, which is like yeah. my whole world. Yeah. Oh, did, you, did you see Brett's movie? I did, yeah. I reviewed yeah. it for Collider. It was incredible. So freaking good. I got to see it while he was just finishing the cut. And uh, oh, we, oh, we got limited time, so I don't want to spin <laughs> off. But I'm like a Bowie fanatic. So I was like, oh. Brett, you could have literally just like had a shot of his shoe for four hours and I would have been happy. But what a great movie. Oh, my God. Same. Absolutely. But to kick into the questions here, I wanted to start off by kind of talking about how formative this film was for kind of an entire generation of horror fans. But I was curious, what was, was there a horror film that was formative for you either before you made Lost Boys or something that has come along since that sort of changed the way that you look at the genre? Yeah, I would, I mean, I came up, I was a cinephile and I loved like early, like I love James Whale and Murnau and all the sort of silence. Um, and Dracula and Nosferatu and, and Dreyer's Vampire and all that stuff, huge into all that. Um, but I think uh, Carpenter's The Thing was a was the big cultural game changer for most of me and my friends. Um, I think as big a movie as Jaws was and Alien was, I think The Thing really sort of showed you the possibility of what you could do with the genre. Um, and it really, I think, changed the game in a lot of ways. It's certainly from a pr prosthetics and a practical makeup effect standpoint, um, it, 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 it really was spun the whole industry in a completely different direction. And certainly as a fan, it did that too. You, you mentioned Nosferatu in there a little bit, and I, I was curious, Lost Boys kind of set the precedent for like the sexy vampire trope. But when you're watching a monster film, whether it's, you know, vampires or something else, do you prefer when they're a little more human in that sense? Or do you prefer when they're a little more Nosferatu, Salem's Lot, kind of scary? Um, I like both because I think they're different. Um, you know, I, I, li I really loved reading Dracula when I was a kid. I loved the book. Um, I loved Polidori's vampire story. Like I loved old vampire stories. So... I think it's, I don't think it's one thing or the other. I know there's like a lot of now, and I'm, this isn't my world because I'm an older guy, but like, you know, is is the Twilight vampire or this vampire, <laughs> like, you know, there's like people take to the street and fight this stuff out. Um, but I like both. Uh, but I've always, I did, what I liked about Lost Boys when I read it was that Joel was leaning in to a lot of where the vampire stories had come from, which were very erotic and kind of sexually ambiguous. And those things were not new. They were, he, he married them to what was going on in that world in the eighties with fashion and music. But this idea of vampires being that was what, and that's to answer your question. You don't get that from Nosferatu, right? You get that mm -hmm. a little bit from uh, James Whale stuff, but uh, because there was a sexual stuff going on in the background of his movies. Um, and I like that about Lost Boys. I like that Joel was leaning into that. And that kind of thing has influenced obviously a lot of, of contemporary horror now, particularly something like Stranger Things, where you get that same setup of, you know, it's the young gang of kids that has to save the world, not necessarily the adults. And I was curious what it's like for you, someone who kind of set out and, and helped create that sort of subgenre of horror, what it's like to watch those projects be made now, specifically with such a nostalgic lens being cast on the 80s as a decade. Yeah, it's, it's it's interesting. I mean, I I I think it's incredibly well made. Um, I don't connect with it probably as much as other people do because it is it is one step removed from the source, um, which I li literally lived. Mm -hmm. I didn't create it. I was just there. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Um, uh, so there's a nostalgia distancing for me a little bit with those things, but uh i love that people are i love that people are using the 80s now the way we used the 40s when i was young you know i think that in film is great or or storytelling and i think stranger things is great because they kind of take that era and they use it to, to speak about what's going on today through this lens of the past mm -hmm. and that has tremendous value um i was also a really big stephen king fan growing up and i think that stranger things is probably in my opinion like the best interpretation of what it felt like to live in King's worlds at that time. I've never really seen anything else that's plopped me down in the space the way Stranger Things does in mm -hmm. King's brain. 
and kind of to follow, I guess, Stephen King and, and the sort of general horror scene, you just wrapped on a movie called Destroy All Neighbors, which is coming to Shudder next year. And I was curious, you've spent a lot of time in the last couple of years working on documentaries. You did YouTube Effect, you did Zappa. Why the choice to go back to acting now and why the choice specifically to go back to horror? Um, you know, I, I started training again about a decade ago, uh, knowing that I wanted to do some more acting. Uh, we got Bill and Ted off the ground. I got to get back in prosthetics, which is, you know, I don't know what it says about me, but one of my very favorite things in the world to do. Um, and I come from theater. That's where I started um, on Broadway. And I came up doing very in crazy character work. Um, it's kind of my sweet spot. I like cinema or storytelling's ability to be subversive and i don't mean that like necessarily thematically just artistically and horror and comedy have the ability to to kind of punch through various um areas of culture uh, in a very powerful way um and, and in a very artistically liberating way um so when i did freaked that was kind of what we were going for with that back in the early 90s a lot of prosthetics sort of mix of horror and comedy. I knew I wanted to do something else that was a mix of horror and comedy. And so when Jonah Ray Rodriguez and Josh Forbes came to me with, with Destroy a few years ago, I was like, yeah, I'll come on board. I'll play this character. I'll, I'll see if I can help us get it financed. I'll produce it with you guys. Um, and it is a really, I'd say a very fresh and inventive take on a physical effects driven horror comedy. There's a lot of really funny stuff in it, but there's a lot of gore too. So, um, and I'm buried in prosthetics. It's just, it's just awesome. As somebody who is a massive fan of, of practical effects and, and special effects makeup, I am very glad to hear that. I love, I love seeing practical effects. But I have one last question for you, and it's kind of a silly one. But since The Lost Boys is about vampire hunting, if you had to go up against one kind of famous vampire in a fight, who do you think you could beat? Anyone from Twilight? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fair, fair enough. Really, a fair fight. There wouldn't really be much of a fight. I think I would just go boo, and they would all run. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you so much for talking with me. It's been an honor. Great, thanks. And I'm, I'm not giving my address for the hate mail I'm not going to get. I'm only, <laughs> I'm only joking. I'm joking. It's a great movie. I love it. All right. <laughs>